Scorched Earth. You are a survivor who woke up in an unforgiven desert. And of course, you're also surrounded by dinosaurs. Lots of dinosaurs. Your main goal is to survive a hundred days without dying. Which is a difficult task considering the average player dies within the first minute. And if the raptors don't get you, the heat will, boy. But before we begin, we have an announcement. First off, this map has no monkeys. Secondly, this video was inspired by Luke the Notable's Minecraft series, so go check his channel out. Well anyways, let's get on with it. Starting off on day one, I was already hot, which probably would be expected in a desert. The number one priority was water, and luckily, there was a river. Unluckily, this is the home of a titanosaur. I'll need to deal with that later because for now there's a raptor right down there. So I devised a plan. It consisted of making a bunch of spears, but I came across this little gal and I decided to tame her up. For the spears I got wood and made a pickaxe for some flint. Now that I got a weapon it was time to deal with this raptor. He ran off before I did anything so I took this opportunity to drink from the water. I kept hunting for it but it was nowhere to be seen. Well. The water and hose all mine. Apparently it was killed by a Morellatops, so I harvested it. I was gonna need some food later, so I made a platform and started cooking some steak. And so far this place didn't seem so bad. I even made a tent for the freezing nights. I wanted to level up fast, and a great way to do so is to kill everything in sight. <laughs> After a bit I came across a raptor, so I looted it. Raptor. I still didn't have enough levels for Ebola, so I tried taking on a Parasaur with a club. Of course it didn't work out, so I would actually really need Bolas. I started off with trying to make a platform so I can level up quicker, but this Titanosaur was really annoying. I poked it with a stick, but it didn't move at all. What am I looking at? I got stone and made beautiful Bolas. They're really handy dandy on this map. I took on the same Parasaur, but she broke free. After chasing her down again, I knocked her out. There we go. But while she was taming, we were spotted. Shoot. You can have it. <laughs> I found another one immediately after, but it ran off. I made a bow for protection and tested it out. But I'd say it's better for frail creatures, including raptors. Do you know what really is intended for tankier creatures? A boomerang. Before I could try something, it became night, and I was suffering from hypothermia. This is where tents are useful. It was getting warmer and I was bored, so I tried out my boomerang. Morella tops are too quick for this to be effective. One upside to Scorched is that there are silica pearls in dried rivers, which is incredibly convenient. The boomerang wasn't seeming very effective, so I tried it out on a jerboa. And what do you know, they do knock things out. On day two, I woke up and chose violence. This camel was in a small valley, so I felt confident trying to knock it out. You look like a fine specimen. Oh, you have a little friend over there, too. Let's hope you're not part of any group. Oh, you are? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean any harm. If you didn't know, Morella tops fight back when in groups. I got up on a rock to kill one of them, but instead it ran off. Now this one is stuck in a valley so I can safely boomerang it. These guys are great tames as they're amazing at harvesting cactus and they even store water. Oh, it's out. See? <laughs> I told you boomerangs would work. Since this boomerang was so effective, I took on an ankylo, which I'd say is the ideal creature to tame with boomerangs, considering that they're very slow. Well, I'm getting good progress down. After killing some stuff, I could make a Morellatop saddle. This guy's name will be... Mason! I'm sorry, little one. Frick. I'm sorry, little one. I grabbed the tent, some of my loot, and started a nomadic journey to a place with water, cacti, metal, and oil. And yes, yes, that's what I'm hoping for at least. It's gonna be hard to find, but I'll try and find it, I guess. Since we were just taming everything, I got a dodic using my trusty boomerang. I take this opportunity. Oh, it got out. Come here, boy. Oh, 
It's dead now. It's so dead now. Yeah, it died. That doesn't work. Wait a minute. Knew it. Well, I finally found a decent spot by these ruins. There's no metal or oil around, but that's alright for now. Since I got an explorer note buff, I killed many creatures around the base and crafted clay for adobe foundations. I'd also like to add that adobe is the only material that protects you from the heat, which is great, as it's expensive. I went to tame a thorny dragon, as they're the main wood harvesters on the map. Their torpor is about as high as their health, so do not use boomerangs on these boys. And of course, <laughs> my Jerboa tried eating it. Bruh. You idiots. I'm gonna put you on passive. When it tamed, we went back to base and I went out for more cactus sap and narco berries. I was also able to make a forge along with a whip. They also get more fiber than a sickle, to be honest. The house is going well, but if I'm to use this forge, I need metal. And these sandy rocks don't give one atom of it. I went up this hill because I spotted metal up there, but sadly there were Karnos guarding it, and of course a Yuta had to have been close by. A Yuta too. Well I left that area quick. But the thing is, this is the only metal node spot for a long time. So I went up the other ramp at the back when I heard a faint roar. That was a Yuta roar I heard, but that's fine. As long as it doesn't come down on me. What the hell? Of course that happens. Why wouldn't that happen? Let me move, man. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, there goes my Morella Tops, my water source, and a safe place to live. That's it, I'm moving. There's nice. And so, I went on another nomadic journey across half the map again. Oh god. It's a good thing we killed those bugs. <gasps> this game is fun. This game is incredibly fun. Oh hey, no oil vein. Okay, this place looks promising. There's cacti, water, oil, and metal, so this is very much so where I'll be crashing. It seems that raptors inhabit this place, so I went up and tamed one. When I finished, I named it Randy for good luck, and then I tamed these life resources. Apparently, these things aren't all bad. They're homemade XP boosters. The first concern was that this place is dangerous and open. I made wooden spikes and a modern pestle, and while I was waiting for my meat to spoil, I repaired my tools to kill Capros in my watering hole. A carno came to visit, and I also beat it up. While I was harvesting it, I got a lot of prime, so I went up to tame a thorny dragon. Of course, the Jerboa tried eating it again. You idiot! So I put it on passive and left it in the corner. It's lucky to be above snakes, boy. I also used my shooting arrow to take out these varmints. One escaped, so I went to kill it. My raptor's crow bait compared to it, so I had a tough time. I named my thorny dragon Thrawn, although it didn't really fit him. I don't care, cause Thrawn's cool. But on a completely different note, I got new metal for a forge. When the metal finished smelting, I built a smithy, which allowed me to make most of my desert gear. Now with all this new stuff, I was looking like a fine feller. The next day I went out to tame anything I could bola, and the first thing I found was a terror bird. He's very low level, but even then their torpor goes down pretty quick. 
I grabbed some metal and left for home. Now I could finally make a metal pick, and now the next goal I'd want is to get a Dodic as their amazing sand harvesters. But then I got into a massive war between this Dodic. After about 15 minutes, it finally knocked out, and while I was waiting I made a hatchet, tamed another Lystro, and found a great way of traveling. Yes, this, this works. Oh, dang. Dang, look at this! Haha! -ha. I found an amazing way of traveling. Maybe, maybe not so amazing. And you know, I also did a thing. Yes, I just led a level 100 Kano right below my base. But you know, the water's somewhat shallow, and this guy got stuck in a rock. So might as well try and tame it. When it knocked out, the entire dino was submerged underwater. But it didn't lose oxygen. Ark I spotted an Ovis on the terminal, so obviously I went to kill it. But I tamed a Pago by accident, apparently. Okay, I got a Pago now. And my Dodic also tamed. Shortly after, because of Mutton, my Carno tamed too. I named it Psy after Cyborg Man while spelling it wrong, but that's alright. And I just like to say that this man's will be a beast. In the morning, I unlocked the Carno saddle and went on a pure kill streak. I got cactus, went home, and made two crossbows. And then, of course, I went out again when I saw a rock golem attacking something. Okay, then. That's a thing going on over there. Okay, then. Okay then. Oh, that stupid thing! But then something happened. You know who was fighting the golem? Dilly. <laughs> My old Dodic. Well, I left it there and tamed an Ankylo when I had to stay in a tent to not die from heat stroke. Well, later on, I started making my house. My dilly was killed. Oh. We interrupt this program to give you the joy of painting by Bob Rossick. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. We're gonna run the colors across the screen while I tell you what we're gonna be painting today. I thought we'd do a fantastic little painting that's set in maybe in a rocky desert in a sunset. And I think you'll enjoy. Now if we're in a desert, we're going to need a bright sun blazing down. I'm using linear strokes to keep this paint from getting messy. Just like so. We'll just cover the whole middle canvas this color. Now we're going to go right into some cantaloupe. Using the same strokes we'll do just fine. There. How about there's an old blue sky way up there? Maybe it's darker in some areas and lighter in the others. I like that. That's a lie I don't, but that's alright. Let's go up in there and make some clouds. Oh, I don't like that. It's fine, it's just a happy little accident we can make do. Bring some crimson in on the scene and expand the edges. There. Maybe there are darker cloud outlines in this sky. Oh lord. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Shh, we can still paint over it. There. <laughs> what the heck, let's add some brown to that sky. And now we can add a darker brown. Much better. There. For the finishing touch, I'm gonna bring up some navy blue. Looking a little funky, but it's alright. Art is art. Now we're gonna add some sand in the distance. There. Now let's add some bushes using our brown. Use the bristles of your brush to lift those twigs out of those bushes. Shape the environment by how you position them. There. Now every rocky desert needs a rocky plateau, so let's add one. Maybe this rock is rocky. Nice and rocky. Let's make a shadow to those rocky rocks. Oh, phew. what the heck? Let's add shadows to everything. There. Let's add a big hill smack down in front. And now let's shade it in. Keep shading. And before you come after me to make it a large brush, using those stupid controls, I can only get that to work on console. There. Let's add some highlights to the main hill. Make a path. A rocky rock. Whatever you'd like. There. And now, let's add a cactus. There. 
Before we go on, let's make some lighter highlights to the path. <laughs> I got a bit carried away there. <laughs> there! <laughs> what the heck? How about these rocks have the sun glistening on the edges? And now let's add that to everything else in the painting. There! Now every cactus needs a friend. So let's make this cactus into cacti. Just keep on adding them. Keep it on. Even when you think you're done, just keep on adding them. There! Now let's do what we did to the rocks. Use your olive color to outline the edges facing the sun. And don't let the dark edge spill out. Let's keep them connected. There! And now for our finishing touch. Here we have our finished painting. Ooh, da Ooh, damn! My house was going splendid, but I still needed a better way of traveling, so I went out with Sai and Mason to the mountains. Why the mountains? Well, I'm so glad you asked. This is the only place with orgies. Thankfully, half the map is mountain, so this really shouldn't be difficult. I found crystals, so obviously I made a spyglass. I also found a level 92 orgy right off the bat. I used an ingenious plan to tame them. I will name you Anakin. What? Okay then. I also had the saddle prepared, so before we went back home, I took extra crystals and sulfur. On day 11, I started off with getting an explorer note when I realized that these bunny eggs from the Easter event actually do something. I saw a bunny kangaroo skin and I really wanted it. After a bit of difficulties, I finally got this procoptodon in the trap. These boys like mushrooms. Procoptodons, or kangaroos as you will, are incredibly quick creatures. And once she tamed, I put the bunny costume on and named her Bunny, of course. Sometimes my creativeness... It's almost frightening. That's when I realized some of the easter eggs give you speed buffs. What? While being the same person I was, I put one on my bird for 15% movement speed. The eggs also change your dino colors, and I didn't particularly like them. I used a second egg, and in my opinion, it was much better. Then for the next day, Anakin and I journeyed throughout the entire border of the map. I can't even open it. Really? Pastel. Hold up. And wait a minute. Why is there... A wyvern out here. That was a very successful journey, and during the night I was looking for oil bugs since I needed a fabricator. But there was just a level 56 thylo standing right there, so I tranked it. When it knocked out, I had to kill snakes for their prime. It was day 13 now and the tame was going well, and I was able to snatch a thick oil bug. But then we got stuck in a sandstorm. After it faded away, I named her Tamara. Silos can climb walls, take reduced fall damage, and have a bleed attack. When I got back to base, I made my fabricator, which was the first step to the evolution. You're gonna want to sit back for this one. Oh. Thanks for nothing, Bunny. Kill it! What the hell's wrong with you? Okay, maybe the time loss wasn't that long. I crafted grappling hooks, parachutes, and platforms because I was gonna go spelunking. <laughs> I love caves. <gasps> yeah. Mm hmm. But this time I will succeed. Hopefully. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this isn't ominous.
Oh, that's a manticore thing. Oh my. of the destroyer cool oh sweet baby that's Excalibur right there oh god man let me on this side please okay cool we just did a thing yeah to be fair that was not difficult Actually, in fact, it was easy. What type of map is this? I kind of like easy caves, you know? It's not stressful, it's happy, and I have an industrial forge now. Well, I went out to find another cave, and they're really easy to find. Just look how obvious that is. I rode my Carno in just because he needed some action, but then there was a tiny passage too large for a dino. I swapped him out for Tamara, and I thought Tamara was smaller, but she didn't fit either so I had to crawl through. Well, alrighty then, you know you're getting close when there's a bottomless pit. I pass through these jumps with ease, but there will always be that threat of death. As I fondly remember last time, and as you probably fondly remember if you watched my previous videos with weird discoloration issues. It's not there. Oh, it is there. I'm an idiot. Okay, well. Here's yet another one. And a pike skin. You know what I said about the bottomless pit being bottomless? It's actually not bottomless. Okay, I get it now. Ark is trying to pamper me up. Until it hits me with an alpha wyvern at my base. Or a rock elemental stomping on me or something. I don't know. But it's sketchy. This game is not supposed to be easy. Again? Really? Okay, we got the second cave down. Uh, one last artifact. I already somewhat knew where the other caves were, but this next one is exactly there. Twenty minutes later and I found the cave of the crag. And it was easy. A little too easy. I don't feel safe at all. Once we disposed of these walking nuggets, I journeyed back home in the heat wave. No! On day 21, I searched for a rex, and sure enough, there was a 76 up the hill. I used stone gateways and bear traps so that when it walks in, I just need to place a gate at the back. And while there was time to waste, I killed neighboring inferiors and harvested my salty salt. I already have an ankylo, but this level was just way too tempting to pass up. I went home to make the saddles and returned to wait. I named my rex relic, but while I was waiting, I saw a red drop. Well, okay, there goes that drop. I tried to find desert drops, but those were also nowhere to be seen. Fantastic. You know, I had a sudden urge to make an RPG. You might think that's a really random thing to do, and I'd have to agree with you there. But I had an urge to do something. I don't care. Ray Sexty. Bop boom, boy. I guess I did learn a few things. My older Ankylo doesn't do extra damage to Elementalists, and I also learned something about health. Oh my god. Annoyingly, in this game, sometimes if creatures harvest other creatures, they gain all their health back. Well, that was time well spent. During the night, I looked for more desert drops, but I'm convinced that they just don't exist. Day 23 started off just like any other day. I looked for a male rex, and strangely enough, I found the mother load. There was a tech rex, garbage, 112, and even a 104 back there. Once I made the trap, the 112 started following me until it aggroed onto this dodic. 
I tried killing it, but it was way too chunky, so I had to drop it to the side. Evidently, the side wasn't far enough, so I had to try again. When it got in the trap, I started knocking it out. What are you doing? You aren't attacking it, are you? I resumed, and so did the Dodic. Dodic, go away. I dropped it considerably farther away this time. Once I was actually alone with the Rex, it was going well, all until I heard a few tiny little footsteps behind me. No way! Have fun with your Dodic. <laughs> That's what you get, boy. Now that there wasn't a single chance of disturbance, the Rex finally started taming. In the morning, I opened a gold drop for the five billion fly mantria saddle. I named my Rex Constantine. Wait, what? Replaced my oil vein, collected just a bit of stone, and finally realized that you can crack easter eggs. Anyway, I got a chibi stego now. I was looking through my engrams until I stumbled upon turrets. So the next day I collected pearls for electronics. Then I made just a bit of ammo. And then I made just a bit of everything. I was also thinking about getting Lymantria, so I knocked it out along with another one, but then I was ambushed. God damn it! While I waited, I cracked just a few eggs. You know, just a little bit, just to pass the time. Once we were at base, I put a few chibis in my boy Lenny. I soared through the sky as I saw a red drop, but it was in the same spot, so I didn't get anything. <sighs> During the trip back, I spotted some pigs and got the higher level alone. They'll be good for boss fights, or maybe even wyvern raising because of their passive heal. And pigs are very quick tames, just because of the sheer amount of food that they eat. I made a trough to put meat in so that this guy doesn't starve. And now I was ready for the wyvern trench. I took a rex, some life Astros, Tamara, and the Liverns. And while we were traveling to the cave, there was a red drop. Maybe there's a Rex saddle. Oh, wait, no, it's just a Lymantria saddle. Here's another one. Maybe there's at least something different? No, it's just a Lymantria saddle. Mm, yes! Well, I boarded the trench until I found the perfect secluded spot to set up camp. If you're new to this game, spelunking in wyvern trenches is all about stealing one of their eggs, and I forgot. Auto turrets need an outlet. So as I was saying, wyverns aren't the kindest creatures in the world, and in fact, they're really just nasty. Which is why I really want these turrets. Now that they were done setting up, I stood at the edge to snipe at any threats down there. Of course, just my sniper wouldn't do it, but these will, most definitely. We dove down into the trench because there was a poison egg just ready to be taken. 120? And now I'd say that was pretty successful. I left for home feeling overjoyed while I abducted a second pig. I went to my base and grabbed a bunny to tame it, and after that it was actually time to hatch the thing. Oh my god. That's a beautiful- oh my god. That's not so beautiful. Viper was fully imprinted, and I didn't really need the dead-ons because of my rates, so I went out for a test drive. I was just one single click away from dying. I was grateful for Viper's levels, but a poison wyvern just wasn't really my preference, because I don't really want to die. The next morning, I arrived at the trench to retrieve another egg, and that I did. An alpha was guarding a certain spot with eggs, but I was determined to grab them. Whoa! What the heck, boy? Sweet baby Jesus, that's the one. Okay then, that was a very successful journey. This upcoming time lapse is just me literally doing everything that's boring in this game. Grinding. Let me open it. Let me, let, let me open it. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do?
awesome. What? Well, let me have a rule and a saw and a board and I'll cut it. I'll climb up a ladder Morning, with a hammer You're good. You're and all right, I'll boy. nail it. Well, we worked so hard to build a little house together. In the snow or the rain or the ice cold wind, whenever. No matter what the weather. We interrupt this program to give you The Joy of Painting by Bob Rossick. Hey, everybody. I'm glad you could join me today. Now we're going to roll the colors across the screen while I tell you what we're going to be painting today. I'm thinking of painting a desert storm at night. First, we'll start off with a canvas painted midnight black. Oh, what the heck? We gotta do it manually since only titanium white lets it paint on it. I guess we're using watercolors then. There! Now let's grab some of our purple and make a little indication of a nebula right out there. Remember, our technique is to use horizontal strokes. But really, you can do whatever you want. It's your own little world out there. How about there's a little touch of magenta in that sky? Why not? You know, I was once staring out into the sky with my spyglass, and I noticed that the stars were orange. And I thought, that's a little bit funky. How could every star be so orange? And then I remembered it's our own little world out there. There. Now that we got most of the canvas shaded in, take your slate and indicate some sand dunes out there. Just make them wavy, as if they were sculpted by the wind. Which, of course, they are. Now it's time for us to separate the dunes from the sky. Use your navy to color the edges of the sky. And now we're gonna add a big chunk of blue right in the middle. We don't have many colors, but this'll do the job. Now for the fun part. Make a big old pile of light in the sky. Like so. Just let it happen. Go wherever your mind takes you because I'm improvising this as I go to. Maybe the nebula's light is showing on these clouds up here. Why not? And maybe... There's even a beam of lightning shining down through them. How about this beam is coming from a dragon? Make all those little shapes of its silhouette. Let's add some glow to those wings. And now for the real crazy part. Let's make a little lightning strike poking out. Oh, what the heck? Let's go crazy. How about we give this lightning a little friend? And another. Maybe one over there too. A few over there. Dash to the side. There. Here we have our finished painting. I've never done anything close to this, so it was a fun and blind experience. All right now, I know it's a little bit unholy, but we're doing a second painting. This one will be a little quicker. We'll be painting an ocean scene. Go ahead and paint the sky, sky blue. And now let's add some tropical water using our cyan. I can just imagine how warm this water is. There. Let's add some shadows to where we'll make some waves. And I'll grab your titanium white to make that foam up there. Now we gotta add some sand. Lots of sand. All different colors. Very different colors. There you go. How about there's a big bush right down there using our dark green? Maybe we'll try some different colors. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm using olive, mud, and brown for this effect. Now let's give this bush a friend. We don't want our bushes to be lonely. What the heck? Let's just add a bunch of bushes. There. Now let's add some details to the shadows. Ooh, there. There we go. But maybe over time, these little bushes might get destroyed. Like by a tsunami that wipes them from existence. All it takes is just a little earthquake. Luckily, that'll never happen. Because in our world, we can do anything we want. Anything at all. There. Now let's sign our painting. I hope you enjoyed. Happy painting. And God bless my friend. You're probably wondering why I was acting a bit weird right there. You know how I said the Ark was pampering me up just so that I can die in some weird way? Well... The f Excuse me, game? The f What? I just logged on and everything's gone? Am I able to get back to my base? I hadn't played for like five days, I just got off after I was done painting, and apparently my my survivor is dead? Or is it not? I don't know. So, Ark had a patch update, and apparently it deleted nearly every Microsoft user single player save. 
As you might have figured it out, I was one of them. But although this world is gone, I still have my levels, so I didn't actually die. So I came up with a plan. Yeah, I know, this is cheap, but I'd say it's completely reasonable. So we got some stuff, the necessities. Over three days we made new doors, a new greenhouse, we have a new type of Constantine, and a new Ragnarok. Here's Tamara, Anakin, Danny. We have like our fifth Anki. We got Sai, Bunny, Mason, Pumba. We got pepto Bismol, and we got Bane over there. For the house, everything is pretty much the same, except for the paintings and their resources. But when it comes to starting from scratch because of something out of my control, I'm going to cheat, boy. In the night, I went to my pumps to grab some oil, and then I checked my tribe log, where it clearly says that I did not die. I had meat spoiling in my inventory while I left the oil to cook so that I could make some narcotics. In the morning, we went out for metal while my rexes started breeding again. I made arrows and crossbows because I was going to tame a horse. And if I'm going to tame anything, I'll need a spyglass. This equus seems alright. Oh, it's a passive tame? Yeah, they're passive tames, but they don't ever stop running, so you can't really tame them. When bringing a different one home, it also ran off. Once it calmed down, I mounted it, but honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. Ouchie. It ran into a wolf and immediately died, so that was fun. I did come across a hyena, so there's no reason not to try and tame it. No, don't. Are you serious? Frick you. It didn't really work out, so I looked for another one out in the dunes. To stop it from running away, I made camouflage, which worked very well. By the start of day 58, the hyena was tamed. Naturally, I named him Doggo and brought him home. The first Rex hatched, but the level was really funky. Both parents are tamed 167, so I have no idea what's going on. I journeyed over to the mountain so I can get crystals as I needed a few cryopods. We're gonna need to get the artifacts all over again, so I brought Tamara to the cave of the Destroyer. Are you freaking serious, man? Oh, oh, now, now it spawns in, okay. Well, one down, two to go. We arrived at the Gatekeeper Cave, and yet again, it didn't spawn in. I came back a few minutes later, and what do you know, it felt like coming back. While waiting for the cryo timer to subside, I noticed something a little bit weird. Oh. Oh, I. That looks a little bit fresher than the rest. Caves are always so enjoyable. At the final artifact cave, I came across a sleeping Megalosaurus. Oh my god. Fantastic. Sweet baby Jesus, that took a while now, didn't it? I grabbed a red drop, and then the artifact of the crag. That was a very successful mission, but it's not over yet. Pepto Bismol and I took out a few wyverns for the talons, and we also yoinked a THICK lightning egg. We're kinda right on track again. Hell yeah! There's still a few more things to do, so we'll start off with death worms. They drop black pearls that are used in making substrates. I harvested a bit of sap, killed another worm, and on day 60 I made gas masks for the manticore. I hatched the lightning egg and named her Jupiter, but my settings were reset during the deletion event, so the mature rate is a bit quicker. Jupiter and I went for a test drive, and it went well. Really well. I made Pumbaa heal her up so we could kill everything in sight, and that we did. We definitely did. There was an alpha wyvern, and I was feeling pretty confident, so I jumped it. It aggroed onto another creature, so I took that opportunity to get some good damage in. I got two more bursts in. And then it died! Well, on the way home, I saw a titanosaur, and you know what? I felt like killing it. Unsurprisingly, I killed it with absolute ease. If you ever wondered what you get from killing a titanosaur? Well, you get nothing. Well, that's underwhelming. During the whole escapade, we had enough talents to skip the Gamma Manticore and go straight for the Beta. In the morning of day 63, I made a tranking rifle, because I felt like it, and I abducted another horse. This time I had corn, but this horse just didn't stop running. So I killed it. I got a replacement, but I still didn't understand how the taming worked on them. I was about to give up until I saw an icon in the corner. All I needed to do was tap E whenever it popped up. Now this is the stallion of the west. You alright, boy? Come on, boy. You okay, boy? You alright, boy? Get over here, boy. Me and my boy. Oh yeah, our Raxes were doing well. I spent a day raising more of them. Later I traveled to the mountains where I found a decent leveled Yuta. I made the trap, but this thing was being a bit tricky. 
as in de aggroing randomly. After a long time, it finally got trapped. How you doing? I'm gonna shove some tranks up your booty. When it got knocked, I fed it prime for a quicker tame. I could probably make a kibble, but it seems fine without it. When she tamed, I cryoed her, and we went home in a sandstorm. When I made this saddle, I immediately went to execute younglings for levels. I can't watch anymore. After the survivors killed their fair share of younglings too, I lined them up around the terminal. I wanted to level them up even faster, so I tamed two more Lystros. We have a system here. Hunde 69. I left to find a desert drop where I got some pretty decent stuff. On day 70, I worked solely on my Rex leveling, and we were doing very well. Day 71, I made a few medical brews and equipped stimulants while I took a head count. Mm-hmm, 17 creatures. Not 20, just because I don't want to be sucked under the map again. I placed my tributes in the terminal and started the boss fight. Ah yes, the moment of truth. If we fail, and that is very possible, that means all of this work was for nothing. So how about we win this? There it is. Oh no, I'm stuck in it. Come on, boy! Come on! Oh, yes. We are the beasts. Well, uh, we won? Oh, yeah. There we go, boys. One step closer to our goal. Killing the Alpha. There were no casualties and no real damage taken, so I'd say this was a successful boss fight. And to think this was just the first big step to beating Scorched Earth. Look at all this schnazzy stuff we got. Now, for the alpha grind. I had a Uta saddle I wanted to make, but the only thing with enough slots was a tech replicator. So I went to kill a few dozen deathworms for their black pearls. What the hala nanyana? So far we got 64. In the night, Anakin and I grabbed the crystals, and next on the list was metal. 5,000 ingots to be exact. I traveled to the mountains again to get obsidian where I got attacked by a rock troll. We were having a slapping contest before I had to retreat. I achieved the high ground, so I easily won that fight. I didn't do this just for revenge though. The rock golem gave me some much needed obsidian so I could craft polymer. So that's why you don't do that. Organic polymer doesn't stack well, so I kinda wanted the regular type this time. We left once more to harvest obsidian to fully cross it off the list. Later I had a very nice and boring session killing more maggots, and finally I had enough resources to craft the tech replicator. Give me that tech replicator. There goes all my supplies. All in four days. Yeah, maybe I made this uh, day cycle a bit too long. Now, time to make that gosh darn saddle. I grabbed all the silica in the pond and went out for just a bit of metal. Uh, maybe my rates are too much. I left for a red drop and guess what? I got a live mantra saddle. I got more silica and then left for the destroyer cave yet again. Oh my. Okay, it's not there again. After reloading the cave, I grabbed an additional Lymantria saddle, and then I picked up the artifact. I repaired my armor so I could safely complete the gatekeeper cave, and once more it didn't spawn in, but this time it happened twice. I was happy again once I was given a nice red drop. We got to the crag, rinse and repeat. I went AFK for a good 10 minutes just to be sure. I claimed the artifact with immense difficulty as these rebel golems were bullying me. On day 81, I left to harvest thousands of silica pearls on the river channel. Last on the shopping list was metal, so I grabbed all I could find. To prepare Yennefer for her OP saddle, I made a nice meal to give her. I didn't plan this out very well, since I was picking Rexes out of my base for a whole hour after this. Now, it was time to craft this chonka. We got quite a bit of stuff. Oh, oh I thought it was going to take a while. It made that immediately. You're invincible now. Now that we had the artifacts, 
Uh-huh, yeah, we gotta get 60 towns now. That might seem daunting, but for Jupiter? Oh, it was a field day. I mean, how is this okay, Ark? I lined the Rexes up yet again and introduced Rinsler to the equation. Later, I went and planted carrots as they were one of the main ingredients for bug repellent. I searched for a mantis, but I was surprised by a red drop. I had a mantis saddle, so I thought, why not? There was also a tech scout, and that was very intriguing to me. Look at this magnificent technology. Here's the best part. The carrots finished growing, and I made my first bug repellent. Through the shadows of the dunes, I was able to spot a high-level mantis. I applied the bug repellent and started taming. <laughs> oh, I don't think I mentioned, they love their deathworm horns. Sadly, the bug repellent ran out, and I had to get more. And then I gained her trust. I placed my ascendant saddle on her, and then I gave her my swords. What a fine specimen. Absolute unit. Oh, and it gets better. Look at those resources. What the... Game? What is this? What is that? Am I stuck again? What is this? Oh my god. Okay, the next thing I wanted was a tech rifle, and all I needed was 15 black pearls. But apparently in this game, that's difficult. Deathworm, please. Deathworm, please. Can you come out? Come on. Are you serious? Look at them. Look at all of them. They're all behind the barrier. Give me. Give me. Give me. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a whole loop of the map before I find any. Just 15, all I need is 15. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That took way longer than it should have. But it was all worth it. Cause I got a tech rifle now. Hey boy. <laughs> On day 87, I tried going fishing again, all day long. You sir are a fish. At the end of the day, I had a very random lineup. There's literally a woolly rhino horn. The next day, I devoted my time to getting drops. And of course, the next next day, I got Lymantria saddles above all else. I grabbed some oil and a lot of narcotics, and then created an irrigation system into the house for my brand new industrial cooker. They make recipes in bulk, including paint. Since I could make a ton of dye now, I colored each and every one of my Rexes black and red. I was on a building streak, so I made a cryo fridge too. After all this grinding, I think that our house is pretty much complete. For a PVE bro, this is all I need. Like, this thing pumps out paint more than Disney's TV shows. I was trying to stall the time as much as I could, so that the boss fight would be at the end of the video. So yeah, I made a bunch of abstract art. Then it was a heat wave, but no Phoenix. Later I started creating a Bob Ross studio for one more painting. That is, if I survive the alpha. I got this surprisingly nice pattern down using canvases. To make an authentic Bob Ross studio, I colored it black using a paint sprayer, which I highly recommend crafting. I kinda had a trigger finger and coated my entire house in brick, but I immediately regretted it and had to make a bunch of soap using polymer and oil. Now I was done sitting around. What the? I was ready for the boss fight. I had food, brews, stims, and parachutes. Okay, everybody. Uh, and I didn't grab the trophies. Now I was ready for the boss fight. This is what it's all gone down to, the finale of Scorched Earth. We've pretty much fulfilled our purpose of this map, since there really isn't anything for us anymore. I took a head count, and we had 18 dinos ready for the inevitable. We've done the Manticore before, but not like this. The Alpha is the real test of strength to see if we're truly ready to ascend. So how about we break some eggs? Get it. You ain't so evil. Come on, boys. Oh, is she trapped? Oh, dang it, she got out. Guys, 
follow me. Is she gonna land? Land. Jesus. Is she gonna land? Oh, now it lands? Please. We missed our chance already. What the? Please get her. I think we've got her pinned. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Please, Jesus Christ. Oh, the rock arms are gonna pin her. Come on! Please! Oh my god. <laughs> we didn't take that much damage, but we sure did have a really annoying time. I'm sorry, my sweets. Oh, and you just ate her. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Holy Moses, we did it, boys. We defeated Scorched Earth. So in the end, our 80 so hours of playtime was worth it. Personally, I don't really care about the Phoenix. The Phoenix <coughs> sucks. But other than that, there's not much else for me here. The time I spent on Scorched Earth was a really beautiful art experience. And the most important part was that I had fun. From overcoming bugs such as the deletion event to over preparing like there's no tomorrow, I'm just glad that we were able to succeed. And no, I'm not doing 200 days on Scorched. Instead, we're heading to Aberration. Well anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Happy painting. And subscribe.